safetyfm.com with Jay Allen. Changing safety cultures, one broadcast and one podcast at a time. Welcome to Safety FM, where we talk about safety that's truly inspired by you. This episode of the broadcast and the podcast has been brought to you by Safety Focus Moment. They are consultants that want to help you get to the safety culture that you've been looking for. For more information, go to safetyfocusmoment.com. Hello, this is Jay Allen, and welcome to Safety FM. Hopefully, you've been having a good week so far. So last week, we were having a brief discussion, and we talked about that we had recently moved our hosting platform and that maybe we would lose a couple of the podcast in the transition. Jay Allen. Jay, 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 Jay. Jay Allen on Safety FM. We got a little bit more than what we bargained for. As we were doing the transition, we came to the realization that we didn't lose podcasts. We actually lost whole program. So if you might have noticed last week, you might have had some difficulty finding the podcast. What we've decided to do after listening to our listeners is we have went back to our old hosting platform. Hopefully you'll have no issues finding us now. And what we've also done, just because we were very concerned on where the program was going to end up, we've actually went ahead and added it to YouTube. So now you can find us on YouTube also. If you're noticing any problems, don't hesitate about actually contacting us. Go to safetyfm.com. And if you have any issues, let us know. And we'll go ahead and get anything correct that needs to be corrected. So hopefully this week you'll see the episodes everywhere that we've normally had them posted. And like I said, we've added them into YouTube also. There will be no video of me because that is not what I do. It'll just be the standard podcast, but in a YouTube format. Safety FM. Not 100% sure what's going on here, why it sounds like I'm whispering or I'm half asleep because I'm definitely not either one. It seems like this week I've apologized to you twice. On the mini, I ended up apologizing to you, letting you know that, hey, I forgot to upload the actual podcast, so that was terrible. And then we ended up having to record it out on the road, so I had to apologize about the quality there. And then we lost the whole show last week. Hopefully I'm not apologizing anymore I'm going forward, but hey, I just wanted to let you know what was going on. So if you did have some difficulties, we have got those adjusted, like I said already, and with the YouTube thing. But let's talk about really what's important. And the main thing that we want to talk about, like we always talk about, is safety. I was really taking a look and trying to understand some of the thought processes inside of organizations and what exactly occurs. And it's really trying to have that understanding of when you're flipping from, I guess, behavior-based safety or any other kind of safety that you're doing or any program that you're trying to implement. But what I'm going to talk about here today is human organizational performance. And in really understanding this, when you come into an organization and you start talking to them and you start telling them, hey, we're going to attempt human organizational performance they're going to want to see what that structure looks like. And when you start talking about the structure, it's going to be very difficult for most organizations to understand that it's not a program per se. So you're not going to sit there and say, we're going to do number one, number two, and number three. And all of a sudden, now we're going to be hop compliant. That's not how this works. What you're really going to do is really look into the organization and try to have an understanding on what's exactly in place within the organization and then change the aspects of what's there. And that's where you're going to potentially run into some difficulty. A lot of managers want to know how your program is going to work, and that's going to be the issue. It's not a program per se. It's a change in a shift in the mentality and in the culture inside of the organization. And that's what we're going to talk about today and how that explanation will have to come across. When you sit down and you have a conversation with someone, how do you all of a sudden talk to them and say, hey, we need to change the way that you believe in safety? That's going to be a very strange conversation. And understand that this conversation is not you going in there and saying, hey, you've been doing safety wrong. You've been doing safety incorrectly. 
because that's not going to get you very far. What you're going to want to do is sit there, have the conversation with your upper management and understand what they have been doing. Because sometimes we tend to listen at these high level portions of the conversation, but we don't go into the finite detail to understand exactly what has been done. And I understand, you know, that most upper management are very busy and they don't have time to have some of these conversations, but you want to understand their belief system. It's real easy to go inside of an organization, have these conversations, and then turn around and tell you, nope, this is not going to work because we did X, Y, and Z previously, and it worked well. Well, that's the conversation you really want to have. And it's going to be a little bit awkward at first. I don't want you to think that you're going to go in here, have this conversation, and this is going to be, you know, one of these nice and rosy conversations, because this is not going to be the case. All of a sudden, you're going to go in here, and you're having the conversation on Some items need to change. The understanding needs to be why the items need to change compared to what they're doing previously. So this is where some of the difficulties are going to arise. So here's what I want you to think about. The first thing that you probably need to address is, do they have something in place that's compelling enough for the operation or organization to want to change how they view safety? This is going to be one of the most important questions. Maybe they're looking at it if they've been doing safety and it's worked well. Maybe you need to have the conversation on how it can become great. Is there a need for them to want to change the way that they do their performance of safety to move it to the next level? Sometimes it's very difficult to go into an organization and have the conversation about this because if they already believe that they're a world-class safety performance location how are you going to be able to use the information that you have to not say you're going to be world-class or you're not going to be great you're not going to be universal class i only reference that because sometimes it's very difficult for people to have that understanding and it's really not about numbers. It's not about sitting here and going, hey, our numbers can look better if we do this. No, it's really having the conversation and really trying to adjust it of, can we do things in a safer manner? Is there a format that we can use that might make things a little bit better? And sometimes it's bringing in the line level people for them to be able to assist with this mindset. Because keep in mind, we had a conversation a few weeks ago where we're talking about if you bring in operators, field people, and you ask them where the next incident is going to occur next, they'll be able to tell you that better than most management teams will. And the reason that I say this and the reason that I currently bring this up is because you want to go in there and have the management have that particular mentality and that particular understanding. And I don't want to sit here and sound like I'm evangelizing or you know, preaching to you in regards to what you need to do. But I'm trying to see how we can change the conversation to look at safety differently. So it really is going to come down to commitment. Is the commitment of the management team there? What if you walk in and the conversation does not turn out the way that you want it to? What if the management team does not agree with you? Are you committed? Are you going to be passionate enough in regards of continuing to drive this safety program? Are you going to be passionate enough to continue to drive this safety mentality and this safety change? Keep in mind, if you go out there and you try to have this conversation with the line level employees and you don't have upper management buy-in, it's going to be very difficult for the transition to occur inside of an organization. And I only say this from the perspective of when you have the conversation with the line level employees and they're on board and the upper management is not and you're telling them hey human organizational performance is the way that we need to go and you explain that you know it's the presence of defenses and not the absence of accidents when you're talking about safety and you have the staff and your team members believing that but the management doesn't so all of a sudden they're having a particular belief that they agree with what you're saying but all of a sudden in return the upper management is still treating them in the other format of safety that was used before, what do you think is going to happen? How quick do you think that they're going to shift back 
into what was done previously. And I'm talking about the team members. I'm talking about the line level employee. They're going to automatically switch because all of a sudden it's going to be, well, in this case, me, Jay, has been saying, this is what we need to do. And all of a sudden, my boss or my manager is holding me accountable for something entirely different. So they're going to go back because nobody wants to be in trouble. And what we have a very difficult time doing is having this discussion with upper management in regards to how the change needs to occur and that we need to look at our system that's being the cause of the issue and not so much that we're giving the employees slash team members a get out of jail free card. Because when you have this conversation originally, or normally better saying, what ends up taking place is that most upper management believes that, hey, you're just going to let people run over and do whatever they want and nobody's really going to care. And that's not the case. It's understanding that some of our processes and procedures are not correct for what we need to be doing. Those are the changes that need to be involved in the system. This is what needs to take place when you talk to the line level employees. Like I have said before, and many people have said before me, your team members in the field will have a better understanding of the system compared to most upper management. And I'm not trying to dog upper management. I just know that at times they have other things that they're looking at and they don't understand everything about the system. And keep in mind that most of the times when they're hired, they're not hired on to understand everything about the system. They're normally there to generate revenue. They're there to make sure that there is a process in place for X, Y, and Z. They're there for tons of other things. It's not always a focus on safety. Yes, I'm not saying right now that it's not important to them for no one to be injured or for no one to be hurt or for no one to actually die while they're out doing work. So don't take it the wrong way because that's not exactly what I mean. It's important to them. But the conversation most of the time is, why do we need to change what we have? Why do we need to put something new? Why are we telling them that they can do whatever they want? And it's not about accountability in regards of you're not holding your team members accountable because you are. You're still holding them accountable, but it's now looking at it from a different perspective. It's really having an understanding and a buy-in from that team that's looking at it and going, okay, we're seeing where some of these errors are and we're seeing where some of these potential issues could occur and them addressing where it could be regulated, fixed, and corrected. A lot of times what takes place is that as managers, we want to have the conversation and we want to be able to pass blame to someone and say, hey, this was your fault, but we didn't correct the potential issue that's within the system. And I know that a lot of this stuff, you've heard it before, you've heard it not once, not twice, you've heard it probably about a hundred times, but it has to stick. And that's the important piece here. We tend to forget and we tend to default back to some of our old mentalities very easily when we get pushback from upper management. And it's an easy thing to do. And I say this because I've been guilty of the same thing. I've sat there and said, hey, our team needs to look into this. We need to change the way that we do our format in X, Y, and Z. And then I get pushback and then I kind of go back and go, okay, no, 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 no. Maybe I'm looking at this wrong and maybe I need to go back to what I was doing. Or I'll default to my old mindsets of how I was doing safety in the past. And I'm not saying that I was doing it 100% wrong, but I'm not doing it as what I see as a method that is correct now. And that's the thing about it. Your method of safety should always be evolving. Your method of safety should challenge you as a safety professional. Your method of safety should be something that you're looking into always improving. I mean, we have metrics without the wazoo right now that we can actually get. And here's this and here's this metric and this other metric. And you have enough data and information that you can change the system. It might not be hop per se, but you have enough information that you know what changes need to be into place. And I sit here and I look at it more and more and more and I go, we really need to take other points of views as safety professionals and stand and take a look at what we are doing with inside of our organizations and make sure that we're steadfast in regards of what we're doing. It's easy to fault back to what was easy and what was 
the method that made everybody happy. And I'm not saying, hey, do this to piss people off because that's not the case. What I'm saying is there's a different method. And in some cases, it might be a better method. And I look into this and I try to understand it more and more every day. And there's guys out there that have been doing this work and have a great understanding on what to do. And I'm coming to you as a person that's trying to say, hey, let's take a look at this. Let's learn it together. If you haven't done research on the topic, I think it's time. I mean, it's real good time to go out there and take a look at the different information that's available to you. The first thing that I would tell you is, if you want more information about human organizational performance, go to a website called Safety Differently. That particular website, I've been impressed with the amount of information that's there. It has a lot of great data that it covers in regards of safety and what you can actually look into and what is different that's available. And I'm not saying that some of the other things that are out there are incorrect. I'm just saying there's data there for if you're wanting to do human organizational performance. And it has a lot of great data and there's a lot of people that contribute to that particular website. If anything, I would say run there, take a look at it, see what's available. I know today it sounds like I'm mostly on a rant, but what happens is we tend to forget what we can do and it's so easy to ball up and say let me kind of just default back in my old method of safety because I'm getting a lot of pushback and I'm saying no strengthen yourself contact people that are going through the same process that they're trying to change how safety is done within their organization There's a lot of social media presence in in this particular topic where you can actually go on and you can find groups and you can find people that are going through the process of change. And hey, try to build each other up. Have those conversations on what you're having the difficulty with. Man, I'll tell you, if you want to shoot me an email, we can try to have the conversation, figure something out together. And this is where we need to look together as a group and really try to bring together the information about HOP. The other portion that I'm going to mention is get more, 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 more data if possible. There's so many good books out there, but, you know, start off with whatever's easiest for you. I'll tell you, you need to look at different books of safety. It doesn't always have to only be about hop. You can look at different stuff that's available. There's tons of books out there. Anyways, I feel like I've been on a rant and I apologize because I hate when I sit around and I do that. But I just am so passionate about the information. I'm so passionate about the change. And I hate to hear about organizations that are pushing so hard on their safety person or the consultant that comes in that's trying to have the conversation because they don't want to change. Well, if a consultant came in, that means that somebody believes that there was a problem or believed that there was a problem. So there is a reason why that consultant's there. If you're a safety professional that you're trying to change it, maybe the conversation needs to start with your upper management. Maybe the conversation needs to be why. And keep in mind that this is an ongoing conversation. You're not going to have this conversation one time with someone and all of a sudden they're going to go, you're absolutely right. We need to do it your way because that's not the case. This is something that reinforcement and you can't you can't preach it this is a great conversation you can have the conversation but in return if you don't go out and do it if you don't practice it like what people like to say if you don't practice what you preach and they see you defaulting back to the old methods that you used to use you might run into a problem because they're going to think that it's snake oil anyways besides that i don't really have much more to say today If you want to, you can jump on to our website at safetyfm.com, follow us on Twitter at safetyfm, or follow us on Facebook at safetyfm. And like I said, we have recently joined the YouTube Nation um, on there, so you can actually find us there, and the podcast is directly on. We're always on LinkedIn, and I know I don't talk about it a lot, but we constantly have all of our episodes streaming at safetyfm.com, which you can listen to live, or you can go to safetyfm.com 
safetyfm.live and they're consistently playing on there. If you're interested in advertising, please come to our website at safetyfm.com and go to the advertising section and they can get you set up from there. I have been your safety manager and host, Jay Allen. And until next time, be safe. The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the host and its guest and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the company. Examples of analysis discussed within this podcast are only examples. They should not be utilized in the real world as the only solution available as they are based only on very limited and dated open source information. Assumptions made within this analysis are not reflective of the position of the company. No part of this podcast may be reproduced, stored in a retrieval system, or transmitted in any form or by any means, mechanical, electronic, recording, or otherwise, without prior written permission of the creator of the podcast, Jay Allen. We are changing safety cultures. One broadcast and one podcast at a time. SafetyFM.com.